We've made this mistake many times. <laughs> Thankfully, no Not, damage, yeah. but it's caused us to have to reset everything up. It's definitely a bad idea to keep this on when you're driving, very dangerous. I've seen multiple times half ton trucks. I'm just waiting for them to crash. I know. Hey guys, MJ and Izzy from Endless RVing. Now listen, RVers do a lot of dumb stuff present company, yeah. not excluded. All right, we've done many dumb things. We had done a video a while back on dumb things RVers do. We're gonna link that above. Today is part two. We're gonna show you some really dumb things that people do when they're RVing so you can avoid making those same mistakes. Be sure to stay to the end guys because our bonus tip is one that I think a lot of people miss out on. So number one is going to be leaving vents open during bad weather. Now, people like to use their fans if they're cooking or they're showering, whatever, and you leave the vents open. Now, if you have vent covers like we do, you'll be safe. A lot, a lot of people don't have those. So if they leave their vents open, you can really have a nice amount of moisture entering your RV. You have a shower RV. in your kitchen. <laughs> right. So some of these uh, newer vents, like the Fantastic Fans, and there's another brand out there, Max Air Fan, they have sensors on them. So rain sensors, feel some kind of moisture, it'll shut the vent automatically, but I wouldn't count on those those can fail so like mj said vent covers is really probably the best way that way whenever that vent's open forget it or not it's still going to be protected if the weather changes so the second one and we've made this mistake many times <laughs> thankfully no not, damage yeah. but it's caused us to have to reset everything up is not checking proper clearance for slides if so equipped what do we mean by this when you pull into campgrounds or de actually deploying them not even just not checking but just deploying them deploying them without ever even looking yeah that's definitely listen it happens mm -hmm. why do we say this well slides you know they can be pretty deep 12 inches some are 24 inches depending how big of a motorhome or rv you have it's really going to suck if mm -hmm. you put that slide into a tree or into a utility pole or into your car man that's going to be a really bad mm -hmm. day it, it's going to suck even more if you can't get it in so right. this is something we always do we never made the mistake like i said of like putting it into anything but we've made mistakes that we've set up and they're like oh damn we don't have enough room once you pull in before before you level and everything else, just make sure, visually look, do I have enough room mm -hmm. and clearance for my slides? Now, number three is something that we won't have to worry about in a couple years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you don't have to worry about it and you're lucky. But that is not winterizing early enough. How many of us at the end of the season, we're just hanging on, we're hanging on by a thread, right? We don't want to let go. But the pink stuff, has got to come out sometime sooner than later, or you're gonna have some real problems. And we, Go ahead. And it, she said the pink stuff, right? Because yeah. another silly mistake is using the blue stuff. Yeah, <laughs> using like the antifreeze that goes in your radiator yeah. that will poison you. Yeah, there's actually RV specific antifreeze that is non toxic. I wouldn't drink it, but apparently it's safe too. Yeah, you want to get winterized once there's it even a chance mm -hmm. that it's going to be freezing. Don't even risk it because the amount it costs to fix that damage we had a plumbing issue not because of winterizing because of problem with the way a it was manufactured issue. but it was nineteen hundred dollars to fix mm -hmm. that i can't even imagine if it was multiple leaks you're talking about thousands of dollars this is about uh three bucks <laughs> and we take about four or five of these so you do the math what, what's easier just to deal with that <laughs> or to deal with a leak i think uh, dealing with the antifreeze is going to be much easier so number four dumb thing rvers do and we see a lot of dummies on the road doing this driving to Fast. We can't like stress. Maniacs. Oh my God. We'll be the going trailers. like 65 or, or class A's and they're flying past us. I don't get it. I've seen multiple times half ton trucks pulling trailers doing 80 plus yeah. miles an hour. And I go to MJ. I'm like, I'm just waiting for them to crash. I know. It's really yeah, I mean, the, the back of the thing's going like this and they're just, I, mm -hmm. I don't know what the rush is. Maybe the one positive note of the record high fuel cost is that people will slow down a little bit. That would that be good. For, there were, <laughs> that way they save a little bit on fuel. But we've been on the receiving end of this. I went on the passenger seat. Sometimes I do the, um, you know, the passenger foot brake when MJ's driving. I'm like, hun, break. can you just slow down a little bit? We're good. <laughs> so yeah, driving really fast. You know, these things are not made for speed. They don't stop that well. They don't handle that well. So yeah, just keep it, Be you careful. know, there's no rush. Number five has to do right here. A uh, couple of things. Number one, not checking that these lines, you know, periodically are good, not corroded. Rodents haven't eaten them. Because if you get a leak in here, it could definitely be a problem. The second thing is, 
is if it's equipped with propane like we are, you want to shut this off when you're driving. You want to shut this off when you leave your RV. Why do we say that? Again, especially when you're driving, if this thing is on and for some reason you have a crash or there's just a little bit of leak and this sparks out, if you don't believe me, close your grill, turn on the propane for 10 seconds and then click the, the starter and watch it's like whoosh imagine what this would do it's definitely a bad idea to keep this on when you're driving very dangerous also when you leave your rv for the same reason you're not there you want to come back to your rv just shut it off one quick thing too people will say well i have to leave it on because my fridge is running on it just switch it to electric, electric right so you don't have to have that on yeah and then the follow-up another thing that you should be doing is when you leave your rv shut the water off shut your water pump off the water coming from your main spigot why do i say that if you wind up having a leak or you don't know Notice you have a leak, right? And you're not there for extended period of time, you may come back to a flooded RV. If you just cut that water off at the water source, it's gonna be limited to what's in the lines. If you're enjoying the video so far, we invite you to hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so you know when we go live, release new videos. Also, we have a Facebook group, it's private. We want you to join us. It's called Endless RVing, RVers Coming Together. And last but not least, we have a free monthly newsletter. The link to sign up will be in the description below. Number six is a really dumb thing. Please don't do this. When you leave, or at night, make sure you bring your awning in. How many awnings have been damaged because an unexpected storm or wind comes in and people aren't there to bring their awnings in? Yes, a lot of these awnings are equipped with wind sensors, but sometimes that may not work. Again, like yep. that, that rain sensor on the vent, mm -hmm. I would not put my trust in yep. that because these things are really expensive. They would be thousands of dollars to replace. So yeah, bring it in. If there's gonna be high winds at night, you're gonna sleep, bring it in. If you're gonna be out, bring it in. So number seven, and a lot of people do this i think usually beginners we're on an off weekend right now so we're not camping at this minute so we're not hooked up but people leave their black tank open and i'll see people ask this in groups too this is not good because the black tank needs water okay when you're dumping things in there you need that water to keep things to help with odors and things like that so if you're constantly just letting it open and go into the ground there's nothing there to help with odors well because ahead, the, i can tell you want to say something yeah not only the odors in order for it to function properly just imagine you have hard material mm -hmm. you know dry material sticking it sticks to the walls mm -hmm. and it will eventually build up. It will ruin your black tank. So, And it's going to mess up your whole sensor yeah. readings and all of that. So you always want at least one third of mm -hmm. that black tank with fluid. When we dump, I come back five gallon bucket i throw at least that because we have a what 45 mm -hmm. gallon uh black water so i know five gallons you know we're, we have a good amount in there throw a chemical in there all the time we always yeah. have fluid in there even in the winter i put fluid in there and then i put antifreeze, antifreeze yeah. in there so it yeah. doesn't freeze you don't want that to happen so black tank is always closed until you're ready to dump two-thirds or full then you dump it and then put water back in. All right, the next one is a really important one. So I'm gonna ask MJ as an RV inspector, what is th probably the biggest thing you're looking for when you inspect an RV? It's moisture, damage from moisture. And where is the biggest entry point for that? Right above you in the roof. Yeah. And it's crazy because this is one of the simplest places where you could avoid that. It's really not that complicated up on the roof. You have your roof material and then wherever it joins or there's a cutout, there's gonna be some kind of sealant. So you wanna go up there pretty regularly, once a month or so, check your seals, check the roof material that there's no rips, tears, cracks in it. If there is, address it because the water doesn't care. It's going to no. get into your RV. It's gonna cost you a lot of money to repair it. Whereas a couple of tubes of Dicor, I think we go through like five or six tubes of Dicor year mm -hmm. they're a little expensive now like 12 13 bucks but it's really not that expensive and even if you don't do it yourself like i know a lot of people will pay to have somebody just just get it done so number nine really dumb thing RVers do and this kind of seems i don't know to me common sense it's they don't maintain their rv <laughs> Yeah, lack of maintenance, it's neglect. But a lot of that goes hand in hand with not maintaining your vehicle. And, you know, people, they, some people just don't do it. They don't either know how to do it, or they don't know they should do it, or they can't do it, but then pay somebody to do it. Why do we say this? RVs are really expensive, not only to own, they're expensive to repair and they mm -hmm. take a lot of time to repair. So what are we talking about? Just a couple simple things. Like if you have a towable, checking uh, the grease in the bearings of your axles. If you have motorized, 
the motor oil, the fluids, the generator oil, yeah. are things working, the routine maintenance you should be going through, your propane lines, like I just said before. And keep track of them too. It's hard to remember. When did I change the oil last? Like we keep track of everything. If you keep label a, maker. A little, yeah, that, label maker. or a little notebook or on your note, you know, note section of your phone. Just keep track so you know when it's due for certain things. I keep receipts of all the maintenance we have done. Why do I do this? Not because I want to know, because I, I know what we've done here. It's for resale value, right? So whoever buys this RV, they know it's been maintained because I have receipts for everything, <laughs> uh, including the oil changes. When I, I change my own oil, but when I buy the oil and the filters, I keep the receipt for it. It shows, oh, this guy changed the oil 20 times in the pit, whatever. OCD comes in handy. Yeah, yeah. so really important. <laughs> it's going to keep the value of your RV, but it's also going to hopefully give you a better experience because yeah. you're not going to break down. It's going to keep you on the road longer. So what's the bonus tip? It is, and I think a lot of people do this and we really wouldn't recommend is RVing without any type of roadside assistance. <laughs> oh, it's risky. It's risky. We haven't broken down yet, but we have used roadside assistance because we've locked ourselves mm -hmm. out. Why do we say roadside assistance? We have CoachNet. We're not sponsored by them. We pay for them every year. I think it's like 200 bucks. That to me is above and beyond worth it. Why? If we break down and we have to get towed, I know this because I've towed I've had to call toes for big mm -hmm. rigs. Back 15 years ago when I was patrol, it was $1,200. If the yeah. truck came out, 1,200 bucks. It's probably a lot more now. So if we have to get towed, you're talking about 1,000 to $1,500 mm -hmm. just to get towed. What's $200, $200 a year? Bucks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even if we got a flat tire, Class A motorhomes, you don't carry a spare. To get somebody out there is going to be very expensive. We have CoachNet. So far, it's been great. Whenever we call them, they responded yeah. within the hour or so. But there's many different ones out there. Whatever you feel works best for you, definitely roadside assistance. It's something you should invest in. So in the comments below, let us know some dumb things you've done as an RVer. We've done many of the Auntie. dumb things that we just <laughs> spoke about. Put in the comments below or anything that we have missed. So for myself and Izzy, it's a journey of a lifetime. We'll see you on the road.